Guys, your boy Trader Main here, back for a quick little video. Promised I'd get you up something tonight. Like I said in the announcements here, I'm gonna try and make things a little more concise, have a little bit more format, just in general shorter. The 1.5 hour videos are fun, uh, but sometimes I feel like I'm rambling, they take too long for me to do. I'd rather make you know short, maybe 15, 30 minute videos, way easier for you guys to watch, way easier for me to do. Uh, get them out to you quicker, have a little more structure, you know, focus topics. And that way we're not, you know, reiterating the same thing over and over again. And, you know, boring guys who have been around and watching the video steady versus, you know, the new guys uh, who need all the content. And so I'll try and juice up this education section with, you know, like I said, a video just on order blocks, you know, things like that, like market maker versus market manipulator. We got some fun stuff planned. Anyways, today's going to be a Q&A. Going to keep it quick. Um, apologize for taking this long to get a video back up to you guys. You know, basketball playoffs, hockey playoffs been going on. So lots of beers happening, lots of sports. And, you know, I'm a one-man show doing this for free. So, you know, life gets in the way, but uh, happy to be back in the charts for you. So what I'm going to do today is do a q and I'm going to go through all the questions that were in here. I copied and pasted them in here. Hopefully, uh, you know, this won't take too, too, too long. And uh, anyways, let's, let's get to it. So I know some of these I've probably answered before. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll try and, you know, do my best to answer them. So let's start with uh, Hort Stew here. Think of a Q, blah, 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 institutional sponsorship behind a move. Okay, that wasn't even a question. I do not use log scales. I don't know how to use them. I don't use them. Maybe you can do up a chart and show me what you mean by that. Uh, I do not use log scales, so... Um, maybe Hortzu, you can do up some charts, show me with the benefit of uh, what using those would be, how would it help me. All right, Pet Zergling, if that's how I pronounce it, hopefully bad. Main, do you think if you lose a trade, it is always a mistake? You made a comment yesterday after a failed trade when you were short, got blown out, that you should reflect on what went wrong. If I'm of the opinion that you take a trade, just playing the probability if it goes the wrong way, sometimes just take the L. A lot of times reflecting on trades, I mean, they decide they should put more weight in certain variables. Uh, no, uh, I agree with you. Uh, when I say I'm reflecting on what went wrong, I'll look and I'll say, okay, well, am I trying to, you know, perfect example is those trades I posted in here that I got wrong uh, and, and I was talking about. And, and that, uh, let's see if I can find here. This one, I got, I got eaten in the face, right? And I think this one as well. This was the one I posted. Yeah, I'm playing the probability that it's gonna stop here and go down here. You're 100% right, and yeah, I got this one wrong, I took the L. Uh, but if I would've zoomed out, like some of the reflection I did is I went and I looked at this move, where was this, from 8,600 to 9K the first time? Let's see if we can find it here. Right, I shorted this, I think. Might have been over here. Yeah, I shorted this. There's an hour block, order block over here. And I shorted this, basically, I think. Right, going into 9K for the first time in a long time. Maybe it was even this one. It was one of these moves. I shorted, I think I might have been this one. Shorted it here. I thought it was going to go back down to 7,900. Regardless. Um, but... If I would have zoomed out, I would have said, holy shit, this is, you know, on a high time frame even, a clear uptrend with a higher high, higher low, a higher high, and I'm trying to short this thing. So that's what I mean by go back and reflect on, uh, you know, what I might have messed up. Uh, I was just, I was playing counter trend, higher probability that that trade was wrong. So yes, I'm just playing the probability, but I was playing the low probability there. I should have been looking for longs, uh, and that was kind of my mistake. Uh, so kind of exactly like this. I, I went for a bearish setup when there might have been a bullish diversion or divergence, excuse me. Uh, but anyways, yes, I reflect and if I did something obviously wrong, I look into that, but I'm not sitting there going, oh, woe is me. I don't really care. I have risk reward for that exact reason. If I get the trade wrong, I get it wrong. Uh, when I get it right, I make more money. So that's all good. Do thumbs up signify stop taken out? For me, yes. This was posted last Saturday. Do you think it's possible we visit the daily bullish order block at 8,200 before we try and break the swing high of 9,200? Um, last Saturday would have been what day of the week? Let me 
check my calendar because I fucking suck at knowing dates and shit. Last Saturday would have been the 21st. Looks like uh, not a chance, eh? Uh, this thing was ripping straight up, right? So I think I was tweeting along. You know, I tried to short it here and again here. And I finally was like, all right, now I'm going to get with the trend. And I got long. And I caught this parabolic move. And if you all remember, I posted on Twitter. I posted this chart, F and Bitcoin Cash all coming into resistance after basically going straight up. Saying, I hope you took some profit. So I hope some of you did and listened there. Uh, or it could have been a good straight up opportunity, you know, short opportunity, excuse me. Uh, regardless, um, we were going pretty straight up. I still think 8,200 is possible. Uh, now, uh, we could very well come down here. I don't have 8,200 as a level. Um, to me, if we come back down to here, I would long it. And if we come back down to here, I'd long it. A break below this green zone, I've said it forever, uh, I think would mean more downside. But we'll see. Looking pretty bullish towards the upside right now. Not a lot stopping price once it gets through here right up through here. Um, I think a close above this four hour block here, uh, about 9,200, a close above here on a four hour or a daily, I think is really bullish towards the upside, but we'll see. So yes, uh, 9,200 has already been breached, but we could still go back there. Is this a valid four hour order block? This picture here, no. The order block is the up candle before down move. This is an order block here, this candle right here. Draw that one out. This is a down candle. Up candle before down move, down candle before not move. There's an order block. Look, just draw this out with your eyes. Catches it right there, right there, right there, breaks it through. This is an order block, and if bet your butt if you draw this out in time, you'll catch price. Here it is again, right? Yours, you drew it. This is not an order block. Just so happened we stopped there. But if you drew this out in time, you saw now this level mean nothing. We went right through here. But the order block we drew, right? This one, draw this out in time, catches this top and this consolidation and this dump right here, this order block right there. Go back in your charts and find that one. That's the order block. Uh, I'm going to do a video just on order blocks. It's just going to be me drawing order blocks explaining my thought process. Hopefully that makes it more straightforward to you guys. That seems to be one of the most common questions I get is the order blocks and it's one of the easier ones to figure out. Uh, it just takes practice and I think more of you need to get in the charts and practice yourselves. Like some of the guys in the group have been doing great. Shout out to Shads and to Finici. They've been crushing it. Shout out to all the new guys in the group as well. All right. Uh, Rib Zanoff, hope I'm saying your name right, bro. Uh, so OBs are interests, are areas, are are of interest mainly. Fuck, I'm dyslexic or something, boys. Or only when they lead to a break of market structure or the lows you referred to. The candle did not direct, kind of. So for me, an order block, up candle before down move that broke market structure to the downside. That is why that is an order block. Up candle before a down move that broke market structure to the downside. Down candle before an up move that broke market structure right here. This is a breaker. The reason is, is notice how it got blown through here, blown through here. I'll do a video on this with the order block video, but regardless. Down candle before an up move breaking market structure. It's an order block right? These are four hour ones. So again, I think me just doing a video of just of just going through these will help you guys. Up candle before down move, breaking this low, draw that out in time, catch this top to the dollar, and this consolidation, and this dump, and this dump. So very powerful once you get good at them, you just got to get in the charts to practice more than anything. So yes, hopefully that answered your question. Um, I'm not even gonna try and pronounce your name, bro. Uh, so OBs are, is this the same question? Okay, now this is someone answering this question. You're right, yes, yes and yes. All right, Fisher, nice easy name. Trader Main, am I supposed to post my charts in here for feedback? 
since I'm just starting to get the hang of order blocks and optimal trade entries, or should I post on the charts only channel like I did with my last chart? Uh, questions section, I think is questions just to me. Um, for feedback and shit like that, let's put those in like uh, TA discussion, post charts and questions about charts in here. This should just be charts and analysis, analysis. like a chart you're posting and your thoughts on a trade, like bullish above this level. Sounds very familiar, doesn't it? Kind of like what I was saying, eh, bud? Um, you know, this is great. Charts only, but let's try and do questions in this one. Uh, this one will be for my trades that I post. I know it's kind of a shit show in there. We'll get better as we go, guys. We're all learning here. Uh, so yeah, Fisher, try and post in the TA discussion section. Cami, trader man, hi. Hello, Cami. Uh, I'm watching ICT. He was talking about risk on, risk off. I have a question about your alt trading. That's a secret. Uh, um, how does Bitcoin actions affect it? Or even things on other markets or macro stuff, etc. That's a very broad question. Um, something we can definitely go into more in future videos. But the bottom line is every single altcoin you're trading is paired against Bitcoin. So they're going to have a relationship one way or another. It's not perfectly inverse. But a great way to, to study that is looking at foreign currencies like the US dollar and the CAD dollar. And then also taking into consideration the dollar index, uh, you know, or 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 the cable, the British pound, U.S. dollar. So there's going to be cross market correlation between these pairs because they all have a currency in common. Much like altcoins are going to have a correlation to Bitcoin. That's why when you say Bitcoin often run, alts might dump, and you know, vice versa. When Bitcoin is ranging, alts are pumping. Um, Part of that is that there's a relationship because all of them are paired against Bitcoin. Another part of it is because idiots are dumping their Bitcoin trying to catch alt pumps and then dumping their alts trying to catch a Bitcoin pump. It's hilarious. Um, so just like the market is manipulated just on the Bitcoin uh, you know, level, just Bitcoin USD is manipulated, they are doing cross-market manipulation between Bitcoin and F. And not just FUSD, but F Bitcoin. There's all sorts of cross market arbitrage and manipulation going on to a level you guys would be, your mind would be blown. Um, so, yes, there is 100% correlations and factors um, between Bitcoin and altcoins. I do look at that. That's some pretty advanced level stuff. We may, you know, too much to get into right now, but definitely something we can, you know, keep a note of and um you know go toward you know uh, do a video on and maybe go uh you know a little bit in depth on in a future video because that's uh you know that's some high level trading stuff not something you necessarily need to know at this stage especially if you're just learning uh when you're starting start spotting trends drawing order blocks you know identifying market structure that's a good start um you know accumulation distribution accumulation expansion basic stuff uh, cross market stuff is a whole nother level, but ICT goes into it as well. And I think a lot of you, just based on the questions you guys have been asking me, have a lot of studying to do. Uh, I'm more than happy to help you guys, uh, but for me to handhold you and teach you how to trade from not knowing anything to you know being able to go out there and make a live trade is so much work. I've put thousands of hours into this, and uh, you know I'm here to help. I'm here to be a resource, but you got to put the time in too. You got to watch the videos. You got to spend the time in front of the charts you know, fucking around. Uh, but anyways, good question. Uh, yes, there's tons of um, correlations here between altcoins, bitcoins, there's all sorts of manipulation happening. Very much like, uh, you know, that article that was posted, I'm sure you've all seen it, you know, with Bitcoin Bravado and, and Crypto Gat, we all remember him, uh, who, who blocked me and then, uh, and then uh, now follows me again. I'm getting so many DMs, guys. It's crazy. Ever since my Twitter started growing, I'm getting so many DMs. I had a 15-year-old kid DM me asking me for trading tips, saying he dropped out of high school. Like, what the fuck? Um, anyways, that pump and dump thing, like, yeah, okay, it's a bad look, obviously. I think using your followers uh, and dumping on them and using your reach to you know, effectively screw people and scam people, super shitty. Um, but that said, if you are naive enough to think that manipulation is not happening on 
every single coin you own, including the dollars you have in your bank account uh, and stocks you own in your mutual funds, whatever the fuck it is, uh, you're dazed. It's definitely happening on all scales, regardless of whether, you know, people are like, oh, well, crypto is unregulated. This, the, the financial markets being regulated is a facade. Is there really any accountability? Like, ask yourself. So, you know, don't have a bias with this shit. Realize it's happening and realize that, you know, fuck all this stupid drama. Who cares what people online think about you? Yeah, these guys got busted. I think it's pretty shady. Not something I would ever do. Um, but, you know, be aware that this kind of stuff's happening. And uh, just by people a lot smarter than these guys that got caught, I guess. Um, but yeah, crazy amounts of manipulation happening. If you guys were around in the early days, like pump and dumps were such a big thing. And like, you know, I posted about this, like the, the, Wo Long was this guy who was around like super, super, super long ago. Uh, and he wrote this article, which I said, I posted in the education section. I think you guys should all read this. This is how markets are manipulated. Financial markets, everything you can imagine from Forex to stocks to bonds to crypto. A great article, definitely worth reading. Anyways, like I was saying, the, the pump and dump shit, yeah, that was that was shady, but you know, this stuff is happening. And what good technical analysis allows you to do is it allows you to spot the manipulation, the stop run, you know, into an obvious level that's breaking market structure, where it's like, oh well, it, it formed a lower low, right? It should dump, and that forms a lower low, like this trade I posted in the trading ideas. Shout out to me for finally getting one right for you guys. Uh, but like, you know, by all retail analysis standards. This lower low and a lower high, right? You expect a continuation down. But what does it do? You get long, it dumps through your stops, and then it fucking takes off, right? So uh, that's how it works. That's manipulation for you live. And, you know, good technical analysis allows you to map it out and uh, see it in advance, uh, which is awesome. Hope that answered your question in a very roundabout way. Why did you put 600 as a block? I mean, yeah, it's institutional, but the candlestick that you use for it, can you live? I mean, daily. 600. Last Sunday at 2.39 p.m. Let me see if I can find this, bro. Damn, bro, you posted hella shit. Okay, here we go. Do I have a chart around here that you're referring to, dude? Alright, I guess not. Let's just see if I can fucking figure it out. Why do you put 600 as a block? You must be talking about F. This is 600. If this is what you're talking about, this 600 line is the 50% of this daily order block. Hopefully that's what you're talking about, bro. Hopefully that makes sense, right? So this is the down candle for the up move. This is the 50% line. I very well could have, I know all of some of you are already asking, just use this here just the body of the candle. And I would have had the same result. It would have dipped a little bit below, but it's the exact same trade. A swing low into a higher time frame level, stops run, higher low, get long. So it's the exact same trade, but hopefully that answers your question. If not, I'm sorry, you can ask it again and I'll try and answer it in the chat. Um, all right, let's get on to the next one here. It was a daily the green level and the 600 was the 50% line. Hopefully that made sense. Whacked this up to help with the learning process. I'm not 100% sure this is correct. Any mistakes here? Any f info missing? I don't know what this is. I'm assuming this is a four hour level because it's within this wick. Same with this one. This is the D1 breaker, leads to the down move that breaks a swing low, that is correct. 
Obi is not respected, broken to the upside, becomes a breaker. This is 100% correct. So, if that was the question, that is 100% correct, bro. Good job. Then you said Bitcoin is currently moving inside the H1 OB I've drawn horizontal on the 50% of the OB. Okay, question. What should I take from this at the moment? Can I determine bull bear bias from this? Definitely not. So one of the things I was saying, this is the kind of question that makes me think you guys need to study a little bit more, is there has to be so many factors that line up for you to take a trade, more so than just prices approaching an order block. You need to have a higher time frame bias that you frame your lower time frame trade on. In another video, maybe I'll do one called the anatomy of a trade setup or something along those lines, but there needs to be multiple factors that are lining up. An order block, you can think of it as just one piece of the puzzle. You wanna start looking for a trade when price is approaching an order block. Now, if you're thinking, okay, it's a one hour order block, you could wait for price to approach a one hour order block. Um, let's see. You could wait for price to approach a one hour order block like it did on this chart here, right? Approaching a one hour order block. And then what you would do is you would go on a lower time frame and you would look for a trade setup based on the context of price approaching a one hour order block, a higher time frame block, you expect there to be some reaction. What is the trade setup here? Super obvious to me. What do you guys think it is? And I know this is one of the questions later on in the Q&A, but we'll skip to it. This is a Judas swing, right? It's a fake out, a blow of this swing high, and then a dump off. So I mean, that's just kind of part of it. That's an oversimplification of it, but it's not just price being at an order block is a bull or bear. There has to be other factors, right? So in this one, it's an extended up move into a higher time frame block. There's a swing high formed. You know, this is a Judas swing or a swing failure pattern. It's the same thing. And then a dump off. So hopefully that kind of answers it. You gotta have more than just an order block. Um, there's gotta be a higher time frame perspective that's framing your trade. Right, and it's more than just the setup, where's price gonna go, right? Liquidity, liquidity, higher time frame block down here with more liquidity underneath, right? So you gotta have targets and stuff. So there's so many things that go into a trade setup more than just an order block. Um, but that is definitely part of it. So getting good at identifying them is, is a very good start. Hey, or keck, keck, zero. I'm new to the channel. I know some TA, but mainly I'm still learning. I'm assuming ICT stands for Inner Circle Trader. You are correct. Can someone please point me in the right direction? Which videos and material should I start with? Okay, so go into the education section here. And our friend Atlee and Prime, or no, in the video section, Atlee and Prime here made a, made a playlist of all the ICT free videos on YouTube in the order that you should watch them. There you go, question answered. Keek, 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 zero again. Do you have charts set to logarithmic? Okay, same question that uh, Hort Stu asked. Uh, I don't do anything with logarithmic charts. Uh, I just have it on auto. Um, I don't know what the difference is. Maybe someone can explain that to me. That would be nice. Um, what time frame do you use for day trading, swing trading? To me, swing trading would be analysis on the kind of the weekly chart down to the daily and then executing on the four hour. That would be swing trading to me. So you would be trying to play, you know, a swing like this, a swing like this. A swing like this really large moves in price this is one huge swing this might be more of a position trade from here to here but a swing trade is going to be you know a large movement in price on the four hour chart or on the daily chart right a swing on the daily chart this is a really nice swing to play so i would be analyzing the weekly i would see us you know remember we have this order block here we've done this so many times guys uh, this order block here caught the dump. I'd be analyzing on the weekly. I'd say, okay, price is approaching this weekly level. 
I'd go on down on the daily, I would mark up some more levels, and then I would execute on the four hour based on some sort of trade setup forming around the levels that I defined around here. Um, day trading is going to be kind of the daily and the four hour for your higher time frame bias, and then kind of the one hour for kind of your medium term you know, direction, maybe on the one hour, I'm going to say, okay, if I'm getting long here, where am I going to target my profit, you know, at these stops, at this order block, and then you would execute, and we've, we we posted this trade as well, guys, you know, on the 15 minute, was this exact same setup we've seen so many times, swing low, stop run, higher low, take off, so that would be day trading to me, and you could even go on the lower trade, you can go from the hour for your higher time frame, the 15 minute and then the five minute, price is fractal, right? So it doesn't really matter. I personally mainly take trades on the four hour and the one hour. Uh, that said, I do have trades that are based on the weekly and the daily. Uh, I have a mix. I'm diversified in long-term positions and shorter term ones. ICT does a whole section on this as well. Ocean Online, do you draw daily and weekly closing lines in your charts as well. How do you draw and trade them? Probably different than retracements and OBs. Uh, not necessarily. Uh, weekly opens and closes, um, daily opens and closes, monthly opens and closes, which aren't gonna be yearly opens and closes, which are, of course are not gonna be as relevant in Bitcoin, which is not a mature market. Um, for sure, super important in Forex, just as important in Bitcoin. Works very similar to order blocks. These are gonna be levels that institutions are watching. Large money players are the people manipulating the market. Uh, we're going to do a whole video on what a market maker is versus a market manipulator. Uh, but for some reason in crypto, people think the market maker are you know the institutions. The institutions are the market manipulators. The market maker is the person making the market that's profiting from the movement of price. They don't care about the direction. Uh, they're providing the liquidity. The market manipulators are the large money players that have enough capital to actually move price and seek this liquidity, stopping out you know, the retail traders, etc. So I mean, these institutional uh, players are going to be targeting specific levels of price. If you're going to sell $100 million of Bitcoin, you're going to do it at predefined levels. You're not going to just do it as a market order. Um, so these predefined levels are order blocks. They're things like you know weekly opens, monthly closes, monthly opens, and in forex, you know quarterly, seasonal highs and lows, all sorts of shit. The rabbit hole is very deep here, guys. But uh, in short, yes, <laughs> it matters, and I draw them. Do you only use the top and bottom of the order blocks as resistance support, or does the entirety? The entire order block matters. Um, you'll often see that I draw a 50% line, a 50% fib of the order block. Uh, the mean threshold of the order block, which is another thing I've learned from ICT, matters as well. So I, on, especially on higher time frame blocks that have a larger range of price, I'll actually draw the 50% line as well, oftentimes. So it's a zone where they're gonna be buying or selling. So uh, it, the whole area matters, not just the top or bottom. Create a fact section. Yes, so I'm definitely going to try and do that kind of fact section and make, you know, short little videos, explain concepts so new people can just go and, you know, consume them that way. Atlantine Prime. What's up, bro? Um, do you have a rule for making certain order blocks visible on different time frames? In order, I, I mean, I know I like to keep my charts as clean as possible. I said this before. I only draw order blocks around where price action is, where they're relevant to price action, uh, to keep them clean. Uh, the only other thing I sometimes do is if I'm on a, you know, a, an hourly chart, I don't want to see this big pink, you know, weekly order block in my face. So what I'll do sometimes is I'll just put a line representing the order block. Um, so I'll just do a pink line and I'll know that that's a weekly order block. And so I, it keeps the chart a little bit cleaner instead of some, having some huge um, section. Um, but beyond that, you know, only have uh, the ones that are kind of around price. Next question. Can you discuss pros and cons for using either Finex, Max for your margin trades? Uh, sure. I mean, the reason to use Max, more leverage. 
um, more pairs to trade with high leverage. I'm not sure if you can leverage trade anything other than like Bitcoin and Litecoin and stuff on on Finex, but Finex only has three to one. Um, another advantage of Mex, I think, more volume. Uh, they've never been hacked, um, but BitMEX is a much more confusing platform. Having higher margin is dangerous if you don't know what you're doing, uh, and everything is traded against Bitcoin. On Finex, you're trading against the dollar, which can be very nice for some people. It's way more easy to calculate risk and shit like that, uh, just calculating it against the dollar. You can, of course, just invest in regular alts on Finex, so that's a bonus. I have money on both exchanges, and I use both exchanges. Most and pretty much all of my margin trading is done on MEX, and I more so just trade alts and shit like that on Finex. I have trade margin on there before. Uh, I do like that it's paired against the dollar. I wish BitMEX was paired against the dollar, because uh, I hate trying to calculate my profit and shit you know, versus Bitcoin, when Bitcoin itself is an asset that is you know changing in price but at the end of the day you're just trying to accumulate more bitcoin so if you're winning trades on max you're accumulating more bitcoin in the long term and that's a good thing all right uh can you clarify why this four hour order block isn't really including your charts but provides heaps heaps funny word of price ranging activity um I don't really know which order block you're talking about, bro. Um, I mean, it's a perfectly fine order block. Um, so it's not one I was using. Uh, I, for some reason, I mean, it looks pretty familiar. Maybe I didn't have it on my chart at the time, but. Uh, Oh, I think maybe you pick this one. I like this one better. This is technically still an order block. You could have both. Um, but I had an order block up here from this huge dump. And having an order block here and an order block here kind of does me no good. Having an order block down here and one up here gave me more of a range. As you can see, it worked out very well to trade in. Yes, that order block encapsulated this price in here. Uh, but that didn't really matter to me. I was looking to make a trade, you know, on a range and this lower order block, you know, caught this top and allowed me to, you know, make trades going up into here and then, you know, shorting it and getting long back into it. So again, or these are things you just got to get in the charts and practice. You draw this one, it has some price action. Great. You look for a trade around it. If you would have drawn your order block out, you could have caught, you know, this long. So, I mean, it was a good order block. It's just, it's just, you know, which, what works for you. You're not going to be able to copy exactly what I do and be successful. You got to take what you like, uh, you know, ignore what you don't, combine it with other stuff you've learned and make it your own. And this is part of it as well. Um, ideally, I want to see the down candle after an order block violate the low of the order block candle like it does here, right? Up candle for a down move, the down move violates the low of this candle. So confirmation confirmed. Your BTC chart hourly OB between about 8 a.m. and 7 p.m. GMT were fighting to get in and out of the order block. Now we're coming back down. In your opinion, is this the market maker algo is clearing our shorts for a drop? The bulls and the bears is bullshit, okay? Um, that's not a thing. Uh, this the f your first answer was correct. This is the market manipulator, the market maker. It's the market manipulator, really. The institutions they have algorithms that they will use to create this chop. Those Bart Simpson patterns you see, that is like an algorithm to engineer liquidity on either side of the market, which they then use to pair their orders and take price where they want it to go. Uh, it's as simple as that. Well, it's not simple at all, actually, but. Uh, th this is correct. It is the market manipulators running algos to engineer liquidity, stop people out before taking the move. This whole bulls versus bear shit is, is bullshit. Vadim Pocotillo, Trader Main. How do you find the Lunyon in New York kill zones useful in crypto and the way they are in Forex? I don't know, bro. You tell me. What happens every night at uh, midnight Pacific Standard Time, London Open? Usually some fireworks, right? Uh, so the crypto markets are no different than the Forex markets beyond the fact that they're just not open on the weekends and crypto is, you know, truly 24 seven, but kill zones, 
Um, time and price, 100% New York open, New York close, London open, London close, just as important in crypto as they are in Forex. And I would love for someone in the group as a, as a fun exercise, if you can call it fun, to go mark London open, New York open, New York close, London close, the Asian range uh, on a Bitcoin chart and you know, post it in the group for us to analyze. And I bet you you'll see there's a lot of cool things happening around price around those times and setups forming. Trader Main, why did Potcoin, Hempcoin, and Cannabis Coin all dump on 420? I all end in expecting them to moon. Help. Hopefully you're joking, and probably because the market manipulators know you were too high to manage your trades, and so they uh, they fucked you there, bud. Sorry. Uh, do order blocks ever become irrelevant? Lower time frame, four hours and below, when they've been run past a couple of times, or all stops positions. I mean, yeah, once an order block gets run through, you know, I mean, I guess it's invalidated, but there's no reason when price comes back to it that it will not be respected. Again, these are not necessarily just orders sitting there. I know the term order block makes you think that there's just orders sitting there. Oftentimes there are, but when they're, you've identified these areas in price, these are areas that the institutions have bought or sold at before. In this order block, they sold and then they bought here. And so if price comes back here, there's a very good chance that they're going to either buy or sell because if a large institution created a long position here and price gets pushed back down to it, you bet they're going to want to buy it back up or else their position would be underwater, right? Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, order blocks uh, remain relevant. They're areas where institutions have bought and sold and they will buy and sell in the future. And that's why, especially in Forex, which I suggest you guys all do and go fuck around with is like the order blocks they last you know months and years right look at this one i drew this is a monthly order block right on the euro usd the fiber this is an order block drawn in 2006 look what happens when price dumps right into it this is in 2010, four years later. Another two years later, twice. These are monthly candles, guys. So there was days of trading occurring at this order block that was established back here. Dumped through it. What happened? This is 2017, 11 years later. Stop price. Look at the body of this candle and look where we are right now. What do you think is going to happen to the Euro USD here, guys? Um, anyways, so yeah, do they become irrelevant? I don't think so, right? Go draw these in 4x, way more price history to play with. This is a monthly chart, guys, and look at how you know well it interacts here. So it's just one level. This is insane. Hope that answers your question. Reposting here because I asked in the wrong section. Didn't know you were in Toronto. I'm not in Toronto, but go Raptors. Um, I actually want to ask you a question, if possible. I'm trying to get more serious in my tra trading. I'm quite drawn to price action, but I keep seeing people say you should start with a mechanical system before you attempt subjective. What are your thoughts? I don't even know if I understand your question. Um, study ICT. Go watch those videos we posted. Watch videos I post. If you're really, really, really new, go on Baby Pips and learn the basic terms uh, about trading. Uh, forget any of the pattern shit, but just the names of stuff, you know, uh, of candles and just and the basics and the basics on there. Risk management on baby pips. Do that kind of shit uh, first uh, if, you, if you're going to start. And then get into ICT a little bit. And hopefully, you know, we can help you along. Learn Wyckoff. Uh, mechanical, subjective. Uh, I guess all trading is subjective. But it, you have to be mechanical. It, trading is supposed to be if this, then this, then that, right? Like you're playing probabilities. You're not going to be right every time, and that's why you have risk reward. Um, so if you have reasons to believe that price is going to bounce here, you have you know this order block and a lower time frame setup forming. You have all these boxes checked, and then boom, you know your result is hopefully this, or you're wrong. So in that sense, it should be mechanical. There should be no emotion involved. Kill zones work in crypto, 100%. Is this a bullish order block on the 15? Is it significant? Is it worth plotting? I don't know, bro. You tell me. You drew it, and look how much price action 
was held around there. The only reason I'd say it's not worth drawing maybe is because you have another order block here. You know, this isn't giving you a ton of room to work with, but uh, assuming, you know, maybe not the one I would use, I would use this candle here. This down candle, if you draw that one out, it's gonna catch the top here and all of these bottoms, it breaks through and this is it retesting it on the bottom. That's the one I would have used, but yours works just fine. Can you explain how to hedge your long? So I think someone did a great job explaining hedging in the education section. What will be the price of odd JPB By December of this year, you need to buy a decent amount of JPB. Oh my God, bro. By December? Looks pretty shitty, dog. Um, you know, there's an order block here on the monthly. I mean, holy shit, this is the daily. If it snaps through here, bro, it's going down to here. I tell you that right now. Look at this, this is a void. So look at this trade we just caught live here, guys. Oops. We'll just post this one, and this will be our little secret. And if we're right, we're fucking trading gods. Let's see. This down to this block. This is a daily chart, guys. This is a 10 to 1 trade, right? This is the kind of trade I would just punt the shit out of it. I guess it's not 10 to 1, actually, when I do it properly. My stop would be here. Let's just say we enter on the break of these lows, or stop above this consolidation. It might, you know, fuck us and swing high. But, you know, you could take that trade all day. Save this one. But yeah, it looks like it's about to fall off a cliff, and this is, this is all air here. This is a huge void, right? Just like we see in crypto. So if it falls below where it is, it's going to fill this void right in this monthly order block for sure. I think that was a joke question, but I might have just helped you, bro. Hortsu, uh, what is a Judas swing? I think I already showed you guys one. This is a Judas swing, right? Swing high, a fake swing high, breaking above it, breaking market structure, only to dump off anyways. You know? Right here. Swing high, broken. People are going to buy this, thinking it's going up. Dumps down. That's a Judas swing common trade setup it's also called like turtle soup i think i mean we could try and do something like this i'm open to suggestion guys um, maybe we'll do a vote on something like that i do want to create a section where you guys can just go find stuff so i don't have to answer the same questions over and over again especially for new guys yes i trade lots of forex still uh you can make tons of money trading forex I don't know what the fuck that is. Uh, feel free to post 4X stuff. Maybe I'll make a 4X room um, where we can talk about currency stuff. So that two moves up and the lower time frame OBs are now within the existing OBs on this chart. There's a smaller bullish OB within the bearish 4 OB. If my understanding is correct, how is this reconciled when referring to the charts? Is the original herb? I'm not sure I have the right picture here, um, but the bottom line is, is a higher time frame order block is going to have more relevancy in terms of the power of the price move it can generate than a lower time frame one. And yeah, you're going to have blocks within blocks. There's things called mitigation blocks. There's all sorts of shit that is just very depth. I mean, just for the basics, guys, just start drawing them, getting really good at drawing them. That's gonna be 80% of what you need to find trade setups. But uh, the bigger blocks, gonna have more respect than the lower ones, but it's all relative to the time frame you're trading. So if you're approaching a four hour block and you're entering a trade on an hourly, that makes sense. If you're approaching a one hour block, you should be making the trade on, you know, the 15 minute. What happens when an OB Turn bearish to bullish.
You can never be 100% sure. It's a probability thing. You're looking for a setup around the order block. It may not get respected at all. A setup may never form. These are areas where we look for setups. Um, bearish or bullish just depends, you know, the move of price after it was created and then where it is relative to price after that. If an order block pushes price down, right, it's a bearish order block. But if price gets above it, it is now a bullish order block. All right, we're almost done here, guys. I think this might be our first under hour video. Do you see Bitcoin correction soon? I don't know anything about RSI really, besides it means relative strength index. Uh, a correction means it's overbought. Is it a reversal? I don't know. Um, right now, this thing looks like it's going up, so I'm not trying to short it uh, anytime soon. Uh, it looks like it's going up, and I think if it breaks 10K, uh, you know, it can very easily go for this double top here. Um, a close above this order block that we're kind of on right now, close above 9,200, sort of, you know, on a daily or four hour candle, to me would look like we're going to take out this swing high. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, again, if we retrace, this is a huge up move from down here. If we retrace to down here, I would buy it. Uh, simple as that. So, maybe. Um... Do you have any commentary to go with your F chart you posted recently in charts only? I mean, I think it's the one I took a trade on. Tuesday. I mean, I think this was the F chart from Tuesday. I don't know, here we go, Tuesday. I mean, my commentary was, you know, it was simple, right? We were approaching a weekly block. I posted this here, and I said, I hope you guys take profit. And then what happened? It dumped off. Uh, and then it actually came down into here where we posted a trade setup. So all I was posting is we were posting a higher time frame block. Look for a trade setup, or if you're in a position, cover some profits. H4 bearish OB, we just touched. The EQ is the 61. Huge should be a good short r, &R. I think I told you to do this one. I mean, the r, &R depends on the setup for you. Um, I don't remember this exact situation, but if we hit an order block, again, you're trying to short an uptrend. So, I mean, how well did that go for me the last couple of trades I posted? Look for longs when we're going up on the higher time frame. The four hour chart was looking super bullish. You shouldn't have been looking for shorts there. If you're looking for a short going into a four hour block, you should be framing your trade on like a 15 minute chart, not a higher time frame retracement because you're completely fighting the trend. Uh, I don't remember which will be yesterday at 10.52 a.m. Let's see. This is yesterday, it's the 26th day. Uh, I'm sorry, bro, I don't know. I don't know your question. You'll have to show me the chart. Uh, it's When you're asking a question about a specific chart, guys, just show me the chart and then I can comment it on it in the chat. It's hard for me to go back and find it, especially when there's been this much time in between. Again, I have no idea. This is you. There's no if this. It's not going to be you know just because it was support. It's going to be resistance now. You look for a trade setup there, framed on the higher time frame bias. So if it's an H4 block and the daily and the H4 are looking bullish, and it breaks through a four-hour block that was acting as resistance, like it did right here, resistance. When it breaks through, the higher time frame is bullish. So I expect it to be bought off of it same thing here right resistance came through it was support but here look it, it broke through i mean you can't tell every time but if i was looking for a long here right because i said oh it's coming down to this h4 block i'm gonna look for a long well i'm looking there's no long setting up here right it, it, my long setup would probably be like okay i want to see a higher low form here but it didn't it blew right through it so i'm not you know taking a trade here, I could have looked for a short setup, right? It dumped off it, it came back up, I could have looked for a short setup. 
on an even smaller time frame, I bet you there would have been a short set up here. Swing high, stop run, high or low. There's your short setup. Versus here, I was looking for the bounce, right? I had a swing low, stop run, no high or low formed, right? It blew through it. So look for a setup around these levels. That's, I cannot stress that enough. It's not just, it got to this level, so I'm going to sell it. It got to this level, I'm going to buy it. Have a higher time frame context in mind that will allow you to you know, determine what trade you're going to take. This is such a complicated question, man. you got to watch the ICT videos. I know you're working through them, bro. Uh, but you know, this is not something I can just teach you. Uh, this is something you have to get in the charts and see. You got to see what trade setups work for you, what don't. Time and price matters. But like I said, so many things have to add up. You got to have a higher time frame analysis. You got to be approaching a significant level like an order block. And then you got to go on a lower time frame and look for a trade setup around that order block that is in confluence with the direction you have a bias towards based on your higher time frame. Now that sounds like a mouthful, but if the daily is bullish here, when we get on top of this block, I'm going to look for a bullish setup. I'm not going to look for a short because the higher time frame is bullish. So, you know, that's what I kind of look for. I wait for us to approach a level. Again, I tried to short this and look what happened. I got fucked because the higher time frame was clearly bullish. I should have been looking for a long setup here on a retest, like right here or right here. You know, it's a daily chart. There was, there was multiple trade entries here, right, that I could have taken. But I was looking for shorts, which was against the higher time frame bias, lower probability trade. Right, guys? So look for trades around the order blocks, have multiple things lined up, higher time frame first. And those turnarounds, all I was showing is we we're approaching a higher time frame level and price was going straight up. So if you were in a position, those are good places to take profit. Oh my god, this is funny, bro. It's okay, I'm always baked when I do these videos. Yes, this is a great idea. right? What you want to do is you want to be entering the trade after the manipulation has occurred. right? You don't want to get in the stop run. I'm not entering the trade here. The, the, the retail trader got long here, right? Swing low, right? They got long, they bought it. They got stopped out and then they were right. I'm entering the trade after, right? You want to enter after the manipulation. I put, or, you know, just put your stop in a place where for risk reward it makes sense. But if you're wrong, you're going to want to be out of the trade anyways, right? It's as simple as that. Take your risk reward tool. I entered at 610. My target. was here. So for a two to one minimum, right, I could have my stop way under here. If this swing low gets broken, I, the price is going down. I want to be out of the trade. So that is how I do stops. And you got to be mechanical. Put it in there and stick to it. If you get stopped out, you get stopped out. But uh, I'm telling you with practice, more often than not, uh, you know, it's going to save your ass. And it saved my ass plenty of times. Perfect example is that, you know, trade I posted in in here where it literally fucking blew me right the fuck out, right? If I didn't have that stop, I would have lost way more money than I did. Yes, these level works. Uh, perfect reason why these big figure, they're called big figure, mid figure levels work. If your uh, institution selling $100 million of something, you're not going to sell, you know, $100 million of Bitcoin at 8323 You're going to sell it at 8300 you know what I mean? They're going to be doing it at these big round numbers. And so, yes, and they're psychological numbers for retail as well. Retail sees 10,000 as a psychological number. So when that breaks, people are going to FOMO it. Uh, so for those two reasons, it work. Uh, they work, just like in Forex. What's my opinion of the macro? Do you think we found the bottom? 
I don't know, bro. For now, this is just a higher low. And everything on the higher time frames looking bullish right now. We have a higher low. We broke this higher high or this, you know, high. We're creating a swing high here. The the moment of truth will be are we going to continue up from here or we, is this just a retracement on the way, you know, down through these lows. So, uh my opinion, I mean, I I for some reason I have this perma bull bias right now and I think it's partly because when I was in the first bull run, uh the the dump from all-time high was way longer and way more vicious to the point where a lot of people left crypto including me. Uh, and it was drawn out for over a year. So part of me wants to see them kind of like, you know, run it up through here to 12K, blow out all these people. People are going to FOMO, think we're going to 20K, and then they rip it through. Who knows? Uh, I'll be ready either way. But for now, we have a higher low. We have a, high, a swing high here, and, you know, let's see what happens. Why are they going to form a higher low somewhere around here and continue up towards here? Or we're going to roll over and create a lower high and then potentially go lower. Again, I've said this so many times on so many platforms. Above this level, I'm bullish. Below this level, bearish. Simple as that. That's it. Holy shit. And we're just under an hour. Fucking A. Let's see. I think I had a couple questions on Twitter. And we'll fucking call her a day. And we'll do the other video this weekend here, guys. Oh my god, didn't know you had a YouTube channel. Thanks, Newt. This guy's my homie from back in the day, 2014. All right. Higher time frame zone's too big. Use a order block. Don't use the wicks, maybe. Um, it all depends. I mean, if the zone is too big, you should be probably trading on a high time frame where you can allow for big swings. Recency matters, yes. And it depends on the time frame you're looking at. Yes to both. Um, do I seem like 540 to 500F is in the cards? We're pretty far away from there. Um, I don't see us getting below this order block yet. I think we can go higher, you know, towards 700. Uh, below this order block... I'd be skeptical of us not, you know, going further down. I'd like to see price continue up from here. Anyways, guys, uh, not a short video, but at least we're done. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to doing another one here soon. And uh, we'll talk to you guys later.